includes Parshas, Parshas Vayishlach. And um, we'll see, maybe we get a little bit of a Hanukkah tie-in as well. There is, there are two expressions that are used, one by Yaakov, one by Esau, that our Chazal see as definitive in expressing their own Veltanshan, their own view of life. We'll get, see if we can get a better understanding because I think it really has a tremendous, tremendous impact in terms of how we should be dealing in our own daily lives. Yaakov, when he discusses his, uh, apparently his financial situation with Esau, he says, Yesh li kol. Yesh li kol means, I have everything that I need. And he wants to give this huge gift, a tremendous, tremendous financial gift he wants to give over, ostensibly it's a bribe, to uh, Esau. Esau is coming to hunt him down 20 years. The only thing Esau is wanting to do is to kill Yaakov. And he has this huge gift that he wants to give him, this tribute. And Esau says to him, Yeshli Rav. I have a lot. Rashi says, what does it mean I have a lot? More than I need. I have much more than I need. So Chazal understand that this is not just words. These are defining their view of life vis-a-vis their own assets. Yaakov says, Yeshli Kol, I have all that I need. And Esau says, I have much more than I need. Okay, so let's see if we can get an insight into their various perspectives. I think also we need to understand, and this is a very important point to all of us, what drives somebody to continuing to try and amass wealth if they have more than they need? I mean, we see this all the time. You know, people that are billionaires and they still work on the next deal. What drives people to want to amass wealth? What's the psychology there? Just a couple of questions, just in a simple understanding of the Parsha. So Yaakov gives this tribute, this tremendous gift to Esau, and immediately afterwards, after he separates from Esau, they have this tearful reunion, We'll get back to it in a moment. It says, Vayavo Yaakov Shalem, Ir Shechem. Yaakov arrived intact in the city of Shechem. What does it mean, Shalem? It says, Vayavo Yaakov Ir Shechem. What does it mean, Yaakov Shalem, Ir Shechem? So Rashi says as follows, Shalem Begufo, that Shnisrape Mitzalato, that his limp was healed. Remember, he had to fight with the Malach of Esau, and uh, his sciatic nerve had been damaged. So Sholem means he arrived after the encounter. God had helped him get cured. And Sholem b'mamoyne, his financial situation was intact. He was not lacking anything from that large gift, the tribute that he had given Esau. So I think, I think what's, that has to be explained. First of all, on a practical level, it was a large gift. So what do you mean he's not missing anything? Right? So you're going to say, well, psychologically, he didn't feel like he was, you know. But that's, that would not seem to the reality. You know, if you have had to pay off a person because somebody is threatening you, whatever it is, you know. You don't feel good about that. Who feels ever good about, you know, paying protection money? It's pretty much it. See, he was intact. I, well, I, just, I just gave the guy a, a million dollars. I mean, I feel good about I don't feel intact. Why, why is it that... The person, no, no, shalom mamono. So you could argue, you know, money didn't mean a lot to Yaakov. So first of all, then why do you have to go emphasize that, oh, Shalom Bamamon, if it doesn't mean anything to him, then what do you care? But more than that, we have in the beginning of the parsha we have the story of the Pachim Ketanim. 
You have a story. Yaakov has, leaves his family in the middle of the night, crosses over the river, gets into a fight with the Malach of Esav because of these little containers, these little pictures. And the Gemara in Chulon says, from here you see that, that Tzadikim Chavivim Mamonam Yosem Igufam that their money is worth more to them than even their physical safety. That would be something you figure you see on every anti-Semitic website. You know, you don't figure you're going to find that in Rashi quoting a Medrash. It goes back for a little pop. So it means money is worth something to Yaakov. Whatever we have to get the explanation. I mean, it's important that he goes back and endangers himself for it. So then how can you say that, he, oh, the gift to Asa, no, not a big deal. He doesn't, money's not that important. We got it. Money's a big deal. So how could he feel Shalom be Mamono? Besides that, I think we have to understand that. What does it mean he puts himself in danger for, to go get back his vessels? There is an uh, obscure medrash that says that the vessels contain the oil of Hanukkah. Which obviously Hanukkah is something that's going to be hundreds of years later, you know, a thousand years later. What's, what's that mean that it's obviously it's, what's the connection between Yaakov going back to the vessels and the story of Hanukkah? It's to be understood too. Yaakov's whole interaction with Asaph is difficult to understand too. Right? It almost seems to me like a conflict. Is, is, he, is he coming with force? Does he want to beat up Esau? Does he, or does he, is he submitting to him? On one hand, one hand we find that Malachim went and Rashi brings down and they actually physically assaulted Esau, beat him up. On the other hand, he tells them, speak to them, show that, uh, that he's our master. And speaking, Yaakov speaks, Adoni Esau, he bows down to him, he pays off a tribute. What exactly is the mahalach of here? What is the path? Are you <coughs> trying to beat him up, or you're trying to show that you're submitting to him? Don't worry, Rashi's. Don't worry about the brachas. You see, you know, look what you have. Look what I have. He's endearing himself to Asaph over here, and Asaph actually, it, it's working. Asaph comes, wants to kill him. All of a sudden, Asaph now is hugging and kissing him, and wants to be together and. They want to, you know, they want to, what's going on? I mean, uh, what changes? I mean, Asaph, 20 years, you want to kill somebody, he gives you some gifts, and now it was, oh, long lost brother. What's, what's shot in Asaph, too? There's a question all the Mephoshim asked. Yaakov leaves Asaph. By Yaakov, Yaakov Nasa Sukoso. He comes to a place that he calls Sukos. Because booths. Why is he called a booth? Because by even Lobais, he built permanent structures for himself and his family. And for the sheep and for the animals, he built by Mikneu Asa Sukos, he made booths. And therefore, great idea, let's call the place Booths, Sukos. After what you're putting your animals into. It makes no sense, you know. You want to call the place, call the place bias, you put all your family into houses, so then call the place houses. Why is he naming the place Sukkos? Fortunately, it doesn't like, seem like, you know, the temporary, you're, you're focusing on what? Oh, he's so endeared with his animals, and therefore he's naming them after the, uh, that still also needs to be understood. Let's see if we can get back and answer all these questions. What's that? So, let's, let's circle back here. So we have a question we're trying to figure out. No necessarily no specific order here that Yaakov has just spent a lot of money on a bribe to Esau, and why is it that he was Shalom the Mamono? It's because money doesn't mean that much to him, then why is he going after the Pachim Ketanim? Why is he going after the Pachim Ketanim anyway? Endanger himself. Tzaddikim, with that money is so important to them, it's like, you know, you have this uh, vision of Shylock. I mean, you know, that's what it, the greedy, the greedy Jew, I mean, that's, uh, how do we understand Yaakov's interaction with Esau? Why is Esau buying into this? He wants to kill him. 
Yaakov, on one hand, he comes with force, but then he's coming with submission and bowing and, and bribes and tributes and gifts. And also, there's a question the Mizrahi asks, you know, that it says, Vayira Yaakov, Ayetzer lo. Yaakov was afraid and he was distressed. He was afraid that he might be killed with the confrontation and he was distressed he might have to kill Esav. So, the, what do you mean? He's, he's trying to kill you. Why are you distressed that you might have to kill him? It's Especially he asks, what's, you know, why is he distressed? In general, you should understand that the whole confrontation is very difficult to understand. If you're leaving from where he was by Lavan, where does he have to get to? He has to get to Hebron. Why does he have to get to Hebron? Because he's going back to... He's going back to Yitzchak. To Seir, towards, you have to go southeast. Yaakov was actually going out of his way. He could have avoided that whole area and gone straight to Hebron without even having to encounter Esau. It's almost like he puts himself in that situation. Oh, and I'm afraid I might get killed. I might have to kill him. Don't go there. Go straight to Hebron and you won't have a problem. So let's see if we can get a couple of really, I think, strong yesodos here, good fundamental principles and just understanding the Torah perspective of things. Let's start with the original question. Yaakov says, Yeshli Ko, I have everything. Esav says, Yeshli Rav, I have Yosem Mitzarki, more than I need. What's the difference then? I said we're going to try and make this a Hanukkah connection too. We just t- tie this a little bit into Hanukkah. Throughout the centuries, there has been a custom that we give things on Hanukkah. But what is it actually? The Jewish custom to give on Hanukkah is money. Gelt. Hanukkah gelt is money. Right. Americans, American Jewry, has been impacted by the Gentile world. Because Christmas, everybody, no one gives money. You know, you get up in the morning under your Christmas tree, you find a check, you know, that's not what happens, right? You find gifts. You know, Christmas is all about gifts. So what's happened is that, at least in American jewelry, it's, that's filtered into our Hanukkah experience, and we give gifts on Hanukkah. But historically, you go to Eretz Yisrael, you go to, all over the world. You don't give gifts on Hanukkah. Hanukkah, you give guilt. There's a difference between giving money or giving gifts. So I think it all, def- it all is defined by what does it mean? We look at the idea of what does it mean? What does my money mean to me? What, is my, what are my assets? How do I view my assets? So this is a very, very important fundamental understanding. Esau, in, by the Bechorah, Esau sells his Bechorah to Yaakov. Right? He says, feed me. He says, I want the Bechorah. I'm going to die anyway. I'm going to die anyway. I need the Bechorah. Raj says, he was kofer in Olam Haba. I don't need that. I, I, I need to eat now. Give me the food to eat. Sold his Bechora. How do we view our assets? How do we view our money? There's two ways to understand this. Most of us see what we own or what we earn in terms of how much pleasure can we get from it. How does what we have gratify us? It's the currency of our gratification, the currency of our pleasure. What can we do? Which trips can we go with it? What, you know, uh, buy my next car, buy my next house. It feeds my need for pleasure, my need, my hedonistic needs. That's what, that's what my money does. So why do people amass more than they have, than they need? Because unfortunately, if a person 
sees his existence just in terms of what he needs to satisfy himself, and what he needs to have pleasure, really what it is, is a person is using that as a mask to feel his existence. He's using that as a way to get a sense of, he doesn't feel comfortable, he doesn't feel safe, he doesn't feel, I'm going to die. Every minute that we've, every, if you live with a sense that you're going to die, then you're less, every minute you're less. You're on a path spiraling downwards. How do you live that way? You have to block that feeling. How do you block that feeling? By gratifying yourself. Pleasure. <clears throat> trying, trying to make yourself feel good because you don't, you, 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 feel, you feel empty, you feel like, anyway, there's no sense of existence, I'm, I'm dying, I'm, I'm moving, I'm, so therefore you need, so why do you have a mass more than you need? Because, okay, I have enough for today. What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen the next day? I need to make sure that I get my fix. I need to sure to make sure that I, it gives me my sense of security. If it gives me my sense of security, then there's never enough. I just keep needing more and more and more because I, who knows? Uh, who knows how much I'm going to need tomorrow? So there's one way of looking at it, and that's the ace of way of looking at it, is I have more than I need because... It's what I need today, but who knows what I'm going to need tomorrow. So I have to have more than I need. And I have to amass my wealth. I need it. That gives me my sense of my existence. The other way to look at it is, this is what Yaakov says, listen, God has put me in this world. I have a mission. We all have missions in this world. God has created, we have to get, our mission is to get through this world, get to the next world, having accomplished the mission that we have. What is money? What are assets? Assets are the tools that God has given us to be able to fulfill that mission. Now, you have a million dollars, I have a hundred thousand dollars. It doesn't matter. That means for my mission, God wants me to have a hundred thousand dollars. For your mission, you need a million. You, you probably have a more difficult mission than I have. I only have to worry about my hundred thousand dollars. You have to worry about your million dollars. But the purpose of the money and the purpose of our assets, it's not for us to satisfy that emptiness. It's not because of gratification. It's not because of pleasure. Not that God doesn't want us to have the good things in life. But the purpose of assets in this world is to help us accomplish the mission that we have. That's the purpose that we have. It's a whole different looking. So therefore, Yaakov Venus is actually called. I have all that I need. Why do I have all that I need? Because if that's what God has given me, then clearly that is all I need to be able to be successful in the mission that life that I have in life. Now, it might be, okay, I have to make sure I have enough. I have to make sure I'm able to pay tuition. I have to make sure that, you know, I, I, I might be, those, but those, that's part of my mission, to educate my kids, educate myself, you know, those, that's all part of my mission. But it's not that I have to have more than I need, I have to have a, a mass, because it's not the purpose over here, it's not, just, it's not self-gratification, it's not to uh, give me pleasure. I don't have to block out the fact that I'm going to die, because I, I'm in a temporary world anyway. What waits for me is olam habo. What waits for me is a, a sniff of Olam Haba is more than all the pleasures of this world. The fact that I'm going to die, in fact, it's not a negative thing. Right? What it says, Kitov, that he saw it was very good. The Chazal the Medrash brings down is that, that death was in the world. Death was brought into the world. That's Tov Ma'od. You're leaving the temporary world. You're going to the permanent world. It's not a bad thing necessarily. We have a mission. You have a certain amount of time, a certain amount of assets. Get that mission fulfilled. That's the difference between Yeshli Kol, which is Yaakov's way of looking at his assets, and Yeshli Rov, I have more than I need. Why do you need more than you need? Because it's just to fulfill my need, and I don't know how much I'm going to need tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day I need it because that gives me my sense of existence. In fact, if you have Yaakov's view your money serves you. Your money is serving you. Your money is helping you. It's the tool, the instrumentality to get your mission. 
Esav needs his money. Esav serves his money. He, Esav serves his assets. He needs it because that gives him his sense of existence. He needs to have, he has to keep amassing. That, that's the way he feels like he exists. But it's blocking out his pleasures, his strive for hedonistic uh, uh, fulfillment. It, it's blocking out his emptiness. That's what he needs it for. We spoke about the last week how Esav should have been an Av. We're talking about that Esav was really the powers of Esav were needed in the structure of the Jewish people. And he made the wrong choices and Rifko was able to see that and he basically was cancelled out of being an Av. However, we spoke about that as not on an Av level it is to incorporate him back into the Jewish people with his strengths and his will. If that could be worked out, that would be great. Yaakov is punished in this week's parasha because he didn't give Dina to Esau. We spoke about that as well. But Yaakov understands that Esau controlled could really be an asset. How do you control a person? So it's very interesting. You can either beat a person into submission. You can, you can make a person do something for you just by beating him up. And he'll serve you in a submission. And it's a temporary situation because it's only because you're stronger than him right now that you're able to get him to do it. There's another way to control somebody. If you know that what you can give him is something he needs for his very existence, so therefore you can give him something that he needs you for, so you become so important to him, so ultimately you almost, you're controlling him because he needs you for his existence. It's another way to control a person. It's like almost like a drug dealer. I'm giving you drugs. You need me. I control you now because you need your fix. Yaakov sees Esau. Esau has that emptiness. He needs that feeling of existence. So there's a number of ways that people get that sense of existence. One way is by giving them assets that they can turn into pleasure. You know another way you can give somebody a sense of existence? Kavod. Give a person honor. Kavod actually comes from the word kaved. What does kaved mean? That weighty substance. You like to make the person feel like he exists. That's what gives someone honor. Yaakov's way of controlling Esau is actually by submitting to him. Esau has this thing for 20 years he's got a brocha that he's going to have to serve his brother and he has this he's this inferior complex that now I've been made a minor you know what Yaakov does yes you're going to serve him you know how you serve him he's going to control you how does Yaakov end up controlling Esau he gives Esau the one thing that he, he, he needs to have to exist he shows him honor somebody keeps honoring you and keeps he honors you that's how he that's why he flips him the guy that I'm supposed to be serving is serving me and is giving me wealth and, ma- and, and, and gifts and all the kind of things, things that I need, that Esau needs and Esau exists upon. So really, Yaakov is taking control of Esau without Esau even realizing. So Esau needs Yaakov now for Esau's feeling of existence. Yaakov has created a situation that Esav needs him. As long as Yaakov is around and he's submitting to Esav, Esav feels like a million bucks. He wants Yaakov around. I thought, by the way, and I have to, is that we know that Esav is the father of Edom. Edom, by the way, according to many of the commentaries, the Romans come from Edom. What comes from the Romans? Holy Roman Church, Holy Roman Empire, right? Inquisition. Well, the Inquisition is the negative piece of it, but the, the, original, the, Christ, the original Christians were, they, they developed through the, from, from the Romans. Christianity. What's that? Christianity. Christianity. One of the mandates of Christianity, by the way, is the witness theory. You know what the witness theory is? Is that there have to be Jews by the second coming. That Jews are going to have to be there and bow down and acknowledge 
Yashka when he comes that the, at the second coming. We're going to have to acknowledge that. That's called the witness theory. We're going to have to witness that they were right. In fact, during the Second World War, there was a group of Jews called the Pope's Jews. I don't know if anyone says The Pope had a group of Jews that were protected that the Nazis were not allowed to kill because they had to make sure there are going to be Jews left around to fulfill the witness theory. Fascinating thing. I think, where does this come from? How many, I think, many? What's that? How many? I don't know how many there were. They, it's, 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 they were they, they, literally, they were protected. The Pope, they're called the Pope's really? Jews. Why? Because they need us. This is where it comes from. They need us to substantiate where they're coming from. It's Yaakov. This is Yaakov. This, the the, the, the uh, Rebbe, or Ben HaKadosh, anytime he went to deal with the Romans, he used to learn the Parsha of Yaakov and Asa. That's what the Medrash brings down. Because this tells us how we're supposed to deal with them in life. Until the coming of Mashiach. Yaakov created the need within Asa that he needs Yaakov around. He gives me my, subs- my, he substantiates my existence. But really now you're controlling him. Let's go back to some of the questions now. Yaakov has fulfilled his mission of taking control of Esau with his honor and with giving him the gifts. Yaakov is Shalom Bemamono. Why is it Shalom Bemamono? Because his money has not just been taken for a bribe. His money has been used for his mission. When you feel that you've used your money for your mission, then you don't feel it's lacking. That's the money. I, I needed to spend that amount of money to comp- accomplish the mission that I had. That's not, that's not lacking. I'm not missing it. That's, you know. If you spend $10,000 on your kid for tuition, the kid can't read, then you feel like, you know, you've down 10 grand. Your kid comes home and he teaches you the Parsha, you don't feel like you've lost $10,000. If you accomplish the mission of what you're trying to do with your money, then it's Shalom Mamona. You don't have an issue with it. You don't have an issue with it. So let's go back and see if we can answer. Um, I think that's also why Yaakov goes back for his Pachim Ketan, Tzadikim. They realize if God gave it to me, I have to use it. It's, if you don't, it's not important. It's less important to you. Okay, I'll get more. It doesn't matter. No, no God gave it to me for my mission. I have to figure out how I'm going to use it, but it, I can't leave it. I can't waste it. Yaakov goes back for that. What does that have to do with Hanukkah? So I was thinking like this. It says that the Rambam brings down is that one of the things that the, Egypt, that the, the Greeks did, it says, Pashtu yadehem b'mamonam. So we all learned they stole our money. They made taxes. We had to pay. But that's not the word Pashtu yadehem b'mamonam is. Pashtu yadehem means they put their hands over our money. They change the way we look at money. The, in, the, the culture inculcated into the, the... We know that the Greeks were all about pleasure. They're all hedonistic. They try to change our way we look at money. That's what they would do. What a Jew looks at money is, what's my mission? What can I do with that money? The Greeks look at money as, what pleasure can I get? Which, by the way, now we understand the difference between Christmas and Hanukkah. Because money, if, it's a, if it is a form of pleasure, it's better when it's in gift form, because now you've already identified the pleasure you're going to get from it. Whereas if it's for me to be able to c- fulfill my mission, then actually it's better if it's in cash. By the Jews, we give money on Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the idea that no, our, our values have not been tainted. We understand the value of money. Unfortunately, in America today, all our, all our Hanukkah, we give Hanukkah gifts because I think we have been tainted. We don't understand that that's the mission of assets. The mission of assets is fulfilling the mission that God has us in the world for. Not what's, what's the next fix we need, the next piece of pleasure that we have. So I don't know if we answered most of the questions. Let's go back and see if we answered. What are the questions that we haven't answered? Just see if everyone's with it. Right. So I think that's the, the key over here. That's the confrontation between Yaakov and Esav, Yesh, the Kol, Yesh, the Rav. Is money just our fix to take care of ourselves, gratify ourselves, or is money to fulfill the mission that God has? That's the Yesh, the Rav. I have everything I need. God has given me to fulfill my mission. I don't have enough. I've got to keep having more and more because that's my fix, which is open-ended. Uh-huh. We I, I mean, I think that we understand God has given me everything I need. That's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah.